Well, hi, boys and girls. Got a results from our pre-calculus first annual Hunger Games today. They had six brave men and women compete on a test today, and I want to give you the results. We had some misfortunes. Um, the first one to go was the boy from District 4, and he tripped over this rock right here and didn't make it. And then after that, we had the uh, boy from District 1 got hit by an airplane. And then the girl from District 1 got eaten by a fish. And then District 6, which I'm sorry, District 12, they also got run over by an airplane eaten by a fish. Anyway, our champion, with the winner of the first annual Hunger Games, Girl on Fire from District 4, is Kimmy dominating the test today. So what does that mean? Well, you know, whenever you have a tribute that wins the Hunger Games, that means that their entire district gets more food. So that means that tomorrow, District 4, which happens to be fourth period because of Kimmy, is going to have a cupcake party. Woohoo! Kimmy, you're a rock star. All right, so I've got a file under assignments I want you to go grab, and it's polar coordinates. That's what we're getting ready to start, and I'm going to go through this with you guys. Go ahead and go grab that if you need to. It's under assignments on your front page. And so we're going to learn how to graph some polar graphs this next week. And polar coordinates uh, are of the form r comma theta and they are not of the form x comma y. Those are called rectangular coordinates, x's and y's. We're going to learn to graph with polar coordinates. And the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to graph a polar dot. So the first number is the r, which stands for the radius, and the second number is the angle. Now polar graph paper has these concentric circles and then they've got these radial lines going through these concentric circles. So to plot the point P, 4 comma 5 pi over 3, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to locate the fourth circle out. So 1, 2, 3, 4, you go to the fourth circle out. Then you go to the angle of 5 pi over 3. 5 pi over 3 is that here somewhere. Well, here it is. There's that radial line, 5 pi over 3. So the graph 4 comma 5 pi over 3, you go to the fourth circle on the radial line 5 pi over 3 and that is point P. Let's do another example. 3 comma 7 pi over 6. You go out to the third circle and you go to the angle of 7 pi over 6. Third circle 1, 2, 3. 7 pi over 6 angle and so there's your point Q. Now if you have a, ra a radius or an R that's negative, let me show you what, what that means. Let's get to 5 pi over 4 first of all. 5 pi over 4 happens to be 225 degrees. And now that's not listed right here, but that would be this radial line right here. That is 5 pi over 4. Notice it's halfway between pi and 3 pi over 2. Now the radius of negative 2 means go to the second circle, but go backwards through the What's, this is called the pole, by the way. So instead of putting my dot right here, I'm going to go backwards and put it right here. So this represents negative 2 comma 5 pi over 4. So that would be r. Now notice I could have also called that positive 2 comma pi over 4. Polar coordinates have an infinite number of names for them. Okay, and even the negative angle, 1 comma negative pi over 3. Negative pi over 3 is going rotating clockwise is co-terminal with 5 pi over 3, so that would be right here, and that would be S. Okay, uh, we've got to go through some notes real quick. If I have from a triangle, and if I have a specific angle theta, that's supposed to be a right angle. If I have an X coordinate and a Y coordinate, and I'm going to call this a radius, the cosine of this angle is X over R, so we're going to have a conversion by cross multiplying that X equals R times cosine theta. The sine of theta is going to equal opposite over hypotenuse, which is y over r. So if we cross multiply here, we get that y equals r sine theta. Now the tangent of theta is y over x, because that's opposite over adjacent. So that means that theta is the arc tangent of y over x. That's how you can find the angle. We know from the Pythagorean theorem that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So r is going to equal the square root and plus or minus, but up here it doesn't matter if we're going positive or negative, the square root 
of x squared plus y squared. So let's do an example. Convert 4 comma 5 pi over 6 to rectangular coordinates. That means I need to turn it into x comma y. So we've got to get up here and look at our, our conversions. We know that x equals r times the cosine of the angle theta, and we know that y is equal to r times the sine of the angle theta. So my 4 represents my r, and my 5 pi over 6 is my theta. So let's draw this picture. 5 pi over 6 is over here somewhere where this is like the radius of 4. Okay, so 5 pi over 6 rotation means I've got a 30 degree reference angle. So this is a 30, 60, 90. Anyway, I'll, so my x coordinate is r, the 4, times the cosine of this angle. Now the cosine of a 30, 60, 90 triangle in this quadrant 2 so I'm going to put my negative square root of 3 here, and my 1 here, and my 2 here. That's my basic 30, 60, 90 triangle. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that would be negative square root of 3 over 2. So that's going to be negative 2 square roots of 3. That is my x coordinate. Now my y coordinate is r times the sine of theta. So that's going to be 4 times. Now the sine of this angle the 30 degrees is our reference angles is opposite over hypotenuse, that's one half. And so I get two. And there is the rectangular coordinates for that. Let's go to the next page. Let's go back to polar coordinates. So I've got this point square root of three comma negative one. So that's over square root of three and down one. So that's this dot right here, square root of three comma negative one. With the Pythagorean theorem, I can find r. What is this radius? Well, r equals the square root of x squared plus y squared from the previous page. So r is the square root of the square root of 3 squared is 3, negative 1 squared is 1, 3 plus 1 is 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. So I have my r. It's 2. Now I have to find my angle theta. What is this angle theta? Well, it is from the previous page. Theta is the arctan of y over x. So we want to figure out what is this angle right here. And you can tell from this 30, 60, 90 relationship that this is a 30 degree angle because it's across from the 1. So this has several answers. One answer here is going to be 11 pi over 6 because I'm rotating all the way around almost to 360 degrees. I could have also said here 2 comma negative pi over 6 to represent that sideways, I'm sorry, the clockwise rotation there. Let's do another one. Negative 3 comma 3. So that is left 3 down 3. There we go. So that's a negative 3 Oh, well look at that. Hello, Mr. G. Can you learn to graph a dot? That's left that's a positive three there. Left three and up three. Looky there. Okay. Negative three and three. Okay, so we want to find our R. R is the square root of x squared plus y squared. So that is going to be the square root of negative three squared is nine. Three squared is nine. So it's the square root of eighteen. So that is my r. We could simplify that if we want to, you know, by the square root of 9 times 2 and make it 3 squares of 2. But I'm going to keep it square root of 18. And what is this angle right here? Well, I really want to know this angle of rotation right here. Well, this happens to be an isosceles triangle. These sides have the same magnitude. So if you do the Pythagorean theorem, you're going to get that this is 3 square roots of 2. And this is your basic 45, 45, 90 triangle. So this reference angle here is 45 degrees. So that means that my angle of rotation is 135 degrees, or 3 pi over 4. And what about 0, negative 2? I'm going to take a look at that one. We're going to look, look at this in a different page because I'm also almost out of room. 0, negative 2. Well, we're erasing that. Eraser, boom. That was horrible. We're going to go to our lines here. Here we go. 0, negative 2. Where is that? 
if I can do it correctly. Zero and negative two is right down here. Straight down. So I'm actually on an axis. Now we can still find r as doing the square root of x squared plus y squared. So r is the square root of 0 squared is 0, negative 2 squared is 4, and so I get that r is 2, but I probably could have seen that here. So that's my r. Now what is this angle right here? Oh, goodness gracious, with the, can't keep it between the lines there. All right, what is this angle? This angle is straight down, and if you remember, the angles that are on the axes look like this. And the angle that's straight down is 3 pi over 2. So that's that answer. All right, let's do some conversions. Convert the following equations to polar form. That means you want to have theta's and r in it. x equals 3. Well, from the previous page, what does x equal in our conversions? Oh, there's Kimmy again. x equals r cosine theta. So that means that x equals 3, we're going to replace the x with r cosine theta equals 3, and that is polar form because we've got thetas and r's. x squared plus y squared equals 16. We know from that previous page that x squared plus y squared is r squared, and you can square both, take the square root of both sides, and you get that r equals 4. There's polar form for that. Polar form means get rid of x's and y's, do a substitution. Now let's go backwards and graph r cos and theta equals 3. Rectangular form means get rid of r's and thetas and have x's and y's. Well, r cos and theta is exactly equal to x. So x equals 3 is a vertical line out here at 3. So that is the graph of the polar form r cos and theta equals 3. And what about r equals 4 sine theta? Well, we know that r equals for sine theta is y over r. And if I cross multiply, I get that r squared equals 4y. Well, then I've got a phone call. Well, hold on one second. Let's see if I don't even know if that paused, but hold on. Pause. All right, we've resumed. I don't even, it was, I don't even know who it was. Okay, so back here. Um, I've got r squared equals 4y, but r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. So, let me get back to my pen here. This is x squared plus y squared equals 4y. So we've got some version of a circle. Let's go down here a little bit and do some algebra to see what we've got. We've got x squared minus 4y plus y squared equals 0. And let's rewrite that as x squared plus y squared minus 4y, leave a space equals 0. And we're going to complete the square. And that's, that's where you take half this middle term and square it. So half of negative 4 is negative 2, and squared is plus 4. And you add 4 to both sides. Mr. Bo taught you this in Algebra 2, or your Algebra 2 teacher did anyway. So I've got x squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 4. And this is the equation of a circle that has been shifted up 2 units with a radius of 2. So here's the center at 2. 0, 2, we go up to 4, down to 0, and that is the equation, sorry, that's the graph of the polar graph, two, 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 r equals 4 sine theta. Last example, theta equals pi over 3. We know that theta is the arctan of y over x. So that means that the arctan of y over x worked out to be pi over 3. I'll take the tangent of both sides and I'll get that y over x equals the tangent of pi over 3. Pi over 3, that's a 60 degree angle. Opposite side is the square root of 3, adjacent side is 1, and there's a 2 on the hypotenuse. So the tangent of pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 1. So y over x equals the square root of 3 over 1. And if we solve this for y equals, we get y equals the square root of 3 times x. And it looks something like this. All right, so tomorrow, if you're in my fourth period, you are going to get some cupcakes. Everyone else is going to be graphing some polar coordinates and doing some conversions. I will see you then. Ah.